Oh, that's yeah, cool. you want to hear the story? Yeah, no, let's hear the story. Is it a UFO related story? Yes, sir. Um, awesome. Let's hear it. I was living in Wisconsin. I was chatting with my neighbor on our front porch, just smoking cigarettes at like one, two, three in the morning. We we're just kind of looking out at the stars. We can see the stars at night. It's not too much light pollution. And there's this object. It was really bright. It was like, it looked, I thought it was Mars. Like it looked like it was flashing red, white, and green. At first I'm just like, oh, this is just how like a planet kind of sparkles in the night sky. But then about an hour or two, we're just like talking, smoking cigarettes, whatever. I start to see it drift to the left. And then I'm like, I was like with a witness. I was with my neighbor and she was, I was like, do you see it moving too? And she's like, no, I see it moving too. Like, it's not, you're not going crazy. And like, you know, I was like sober. I wasn't on anything to make it move like that. And she wasn't either. So, and then it would stop. So it would drift about like, you know, if you're going to like use your fingers to like measure inches in the sky or whatever, it would drift like half an inch to the left, like not that far. And then it would, it would stay stationary. And then it would like drift back to that center position. It would be in intervals of like five to like 45 minutes where like it would move either left or right, like really slow and then come back or just stay in that right or left. And then it started like doing up and down in the same, like in a plus shape. We we knew it wasn't a drone because we were seeing planes pass underneath it and block its light out. So like it was mm. like much higher than a plane. If planes are blocking its light out, it's probably in the low atmosphere or something. So that was kind of freaky. And then when I would stare at it, I, I got mild hallucinations of like, like light level, um, geometric, almost mandala, but like kind of TV static. Weird. My peripheral vision when I like was looking at like the neighbor's houses across the street or whatever, my peripheral vision, like there was these strange like gray like vine things almost like like animating themselves over the surface of these things. And it, it sounds a little out there, but like it could have just been from me focusing on a bright object and for like such a long time, but like she like the girl yeah. I was hanging out with was experiencing some like mild visual phenomena too. And then mm. I talked to my friend Tico, who you know. Yeah. Dude, he's he's solid, man. I hope to like he just knows me through art. I hope to meet the man in, in life someday. He's he's cool. Anyway, so that happened. I, I started getting like genuinely kind of like you know, I didn't I didn't feel a malevolent energy coming from mm-hmm. it. But, but like it started to kind of, you know, mess with my head after a couple hours. I'm like, I've never experienced anything like this. And then a month, like almost exactly a month later, I don't know if the second time was the night, like October 30th turning into Halloween or not, but um, it was almost a month later, like a month after or before October or something. It was the same red and white and green object in the sky it like changed like it would oscillate you know what i mean like the the flashing patterns it looked like it was like almost like scrolling from like right to left like red white and green and like the speed of how that oscillation looked was like it would change it would like get slower and then be more rapid the same object showed up this time it was on the right side of the horizon like about like um halfway up the night sky about the same i don't know what the word is like uh like latitude whatever the horizontal one is it was the same object and it had like like similar behavior but like there were times where it just would stay still longer and like each time it would leave around like four in the morning (laughs) and like i talked to tico about it because like he's the only person that could kind of relate that i knew like somewhat personally Mm -hmm. he's like oh yeah me and ali have seen those before we call them flashers or something and they had like whole categories for what they you know what they witness so 
Sure. Yeah, I, 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 I still think about it to this day. And I was exploring the idea of extraterrestrial life, like, and studying it, like, right before this stuff happened. Oh, cool. I, was, I was learning mm-hmm. about, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about, like, the Arcturians at all. Are they the blue uh, skin race? beings i'm i'm not sure but i'm pretty sure tico's one <laughs> so like some okay. dude wa- like sorry. some random person like walked up to him at like a festival or something's like hey man you're an arcturian <laughs> hey devon oh, i have a cool. question i have a question yes. Devin. yep did you hear any sound while you were were observing this ufo you know it was a quiet night we were talking and when we it sounded like a normal night it sounded pretty like i I wasn't hearing any noise um all the hallucinatory stuff was visual for me some people that see a ufo claim that it was strangely silent not just silent but very very silent yeah it kind of like kind of makes you like have pause when you're just where exactly in wisconsin did you see this too so i was in a city about like 30 minutes drive west of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is by like okay. Michigan. It's like southeast yep. Wisconsin. Because there's been sightings over Lake Michigan for thousands of years. That's the world's largest lake in the world. And pretty... I thought it was superior, but you might be right. No, uh, anyways, no, the fact that they, uh, um, I think they actually found a, a German U boat from World War II in the middle, uh, in the bottom of the. <laughs> Of the lake there it showed that they they went through the the rivers and other big major lakes there was some secret submarine mission or something or yeah that sounds sketchy that pretty cool interesting just recently too they found uh like a stonehenge on the bottom of lake michigan with uh madness sketched into the rock yeah man um did they say what shape that thing was it was like in a it's a stone circle with like i think seven foot tall monoliths but like they have it's really nicely sketched out mastodons on okay it. so like again like that that lake was not there and that's a gigantic fucking lake so you can imagine what that fucking glacier would have might have been like on wisconsin's oh, yeah. northern top yeah there's there probably people walking around on the surface before it was a lake it's with like wisconsin's like known for glacial drifts and drumlin so yes no, I don't know how much Daniel knew that Wisconsin was mainly um, covered in ice in that last uh, ice period. No. Yeah, and it all melted and made a bunch of lakes, man. We got more lakes than Minnesota. Anyway, <laughs> no. uh, I want to tell you about this thing, though, man. There's another place in Wisconsin. Um, there's a place called Rock Lake. You might already know what I'm about to say, but they they oh, suspect yeah. that there's like a pyramid at the bottom of the lake there. There's- there's 10 pyramids to tell you the truth. What? 10 gigantic pyramids. Yeah. There's been scuba divers since the seventies going down there and uh, discovering them. A lot of these pyramids are sunk underneath the mud because the weight and the fact that they've been there since the, before the lakes ever popped up for the first settlers who came to Wisconsin, the first white men were asking the native Americans, what because they're actually the tops of these pyramids were sticking out of the lake and they're asking, the natives, what they were, and they were saying that there were the stone teepees from the ancient times. Interesting. Oh I did not find that when I researched it, but I'm like, that's really, that's like a new interesting kind of piece of well, information. Again, me. Rock Lake and um, Astalan, that's five miles away from Rock Lake, and that's yeah. where they have the land pyramids, and those are gigantic too, like stair pyramids. Forbidden archaeology is in those areas because there's just a lot of mystery because at as the land uh the people just disappeared one day they had everything they needed they had food and there was no sign of plague uh, but they did but they did yeah but they did practice a lot of bizarre things like cannibalism elongating their skulls uh, the higher priest would and they they have a princess there that's covered in seashells that they had to get from uh the atlantic ocean so those fuckers had to like do a fucking <laughs> Just pioneer all the way to the fucking ocean from Wisconsin just to get right. seashells to bury with this princess. Um, right. It's very unique. I want to say before I go, I really enjoyed the podcast with Tico. Yeah, but... check out the other videos if you haven't yet. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. hit me up, dude. I'll be around.
Cool. No, I appreciate your support. Thank you very much.